So in this room is actually where I help to people who are having severe spinal related injuries. And I'll tell, tell you a quick story that my office manager, Michelle, who came to see me close to nine years ago, um, she had gone to an orthopedic surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon had told her that she had five herniated discs in her neck and that she would likely need spinal surgery. And so when she asked about the surgery, he said that they were going to they would put a five inch plate in her neck. Um, and when she asked how much she'd be able to turn her neck afterwards, he said, um, I do I do thousand of these. She said, I, that's not what I wanted to hear. So she ended up in my office because, you know, a lot of people who, who are having severe spinal related injuries, they don't realize that there are options available to them other than drugs and surgery. And so for the last 13 years now, 13 years? Yeah, the last 13 years now, um, I've been helping people avoid surgery. And so behind me on the wall are, are people that, um, that I've helped over the years. And we've really helped, we've helped over a thousand people avoid spinal surgery. And for me, that's not just having them feel better now, but getting back to being active and having a healthier lifestyle. Um, but there are certain principles in helping people who are, um, have been, their, their bodies have been damaged to the point where somebody is even recommending surgery to them. And so part of what we do is we do a full evaluation to evaluate where they're strong and where they're not strong. And so invariably, there's going to be areas where the body's not strong. And when you can identify what those are and you can begin to shore up some of those weaknesses in the body, not only we don't want to just prevent the surgery, but we want to help to preserve the body over a long period of time. And unfortunately, a lot of times people who have spinal surgery, and, and you, know, you may know even people like this who have had spinal surgery, and then they end up having pain again, and maybe they have a second spinal surgery or a third one. I had a person come to me and they had had they had had two spinal surgeries already. His name was John, and John had um, had done two spinal two two lower back surgeries, and yet his pain level was still a nine or a ten out of ten. And so, you know, I think that uh, people they they don't understand that you can actually do something about that. So when John came to see me, we did an evaluation, and in the course of, uh, course of making my recommendations to him. Uh, I said, you know what, the likelihood is there's probably about a, you know, I, I estimate there's probably about a 50% chance that this is going to work for you. And I'm, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I want people to know that there are options, but also sometimes we do so much damage to our body that it's really irreversible. And in his case, he had five bones in his lower back that were almost completely bone on bone. And so I was really unsure. I really didn't know whether we we're going to be able to do something about it or not. Um, at the time when he came to see me, he was in his early 70s, and he had a lifetime of accidents and injuries. He was in the military, he was jumping out of planes, all sorts of different things. But he, um, so when we started doing the treatment with him, and I do a treatment in my office called, called um, axial decompression. And decompression, uh, at least in a lot of chiropractors do this thing that they call decompression. But decompression, unfortunately, um, it's not the same thing, meaning that you can't trademark or copyright the words decompression. And so people will come up with this pillow that you stick around the neck and you pump up with your hand and they'll call it decompression or they'll have a, you know, an inversion, inversion table and they'll call it decompression. You know, I think that, that, that um, there's confusion in the marketplace over really what decompression is. But really what decompression is, is the ability to be able to bypass the muscles around the spine and actually put a distractive force, meaning a pull force, on the spine itself, such that 80 to 90 percent of that distractive force is on the spine itself, not on the muscles. So traditional traction mainly pulls on the muscles. You know, we can really, it's very hard to get past that muscle guarding because the disc in the spine is so well protected. And so John came to see me and had five discs that were almost completely destroyed. And so I really didn't know what was going to happen with him. And so we started doing treatment with him. And within two weeks, his pain went from a nine to a two. 72 years old, almost no discs in his spine. 
I mean, I, I, I could not have even told you that it would happen that way. And so I, I certainly didn't have confidence at the time that it was going to work, but it did work. And I, and I monitored, monitored his progress over the course of about four to five years. And he was staying active every day. He was working on his core every day. He was working on his posture. He was doing all sorts of things to keep his body in good shape. It's not going to restore the disc back to his spine. But from, certainly from a pain management standpoint, his quality of life went way up because he was able to actually do the things that he wanted to do and not be in pain every day of his life. So the stories, they, they're, they're, there are so many stories that I could tell you. I had a guy come see me who uh, was a chef and he was on his feet all the time. And at some point, being on his feet all the time, he had, he had pain running down both of his legs. He was a young guy. He was probably in his mid-30s. And we, again, we did an evaluation and we started the treatment. And by the end of the treatment, which was about six or eight weeks, I um, can't remember, this was more than 10 years ago. It was about uh, um, six or eight weeks. He was then riding his bike to work every single day. So he went from having pain down both legs to riding his bike every single day. So, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do, but if you're somebody who's, who's experiencing, um, you know, pain in your lower back or you're having radiating pain that's going down your legs or you're, you're, you've had an MRI and they've told you you had a, a bulging or a herniated disc or you have uh, degenerative disc disease or you have spinal stenosis, all sorts of different uh, damaging conditions to the body, but there are things that can be done to actually um, treat those problems without drugs and without surgery, that we can really turn this thing around for you. Um, and listen, I, I'm not, I, I, not everybody is going to have a complete recovery. It just doesn't work like that. And if you've done tremendous amount of damage to your body, it's not, it, it's not a, a guarantee. But what I can tell you is that I get very, very high results. I would say over 90% of the people that I treat get very, very significant, not only pain relief, but good function restored, which means their strength comes back, they stop having um, uh, sensations in their arms or their legs, um, they can sleep better, they can feel better, they can, um, they can live a better life, they can be social. And so for me, the quality of one's life, you know, we go throughout our life, and when we're younger, we don't really think about the aging process. But as we get older, our body goes through changes, and the wear and tear from the things that we've done can sometimes cause problems in our spine. And the effect of that can affect the nerves in our body, can damage the discs, and it really, really can hinder the quality of our life. So, you know, certainly we're here because we want to be able to help. Um, but all of these people, um, I don't say this to impress you, I really say it to impress upon you that there are answers. And if you're somebody who's suffering and you're not, and you're really kind of dealing with with a, with a really harsh situation and you're not able, a lot of people, they're not able to sleep, they're not able to move well, they're, they're the, you know, I was reading a study recently that said that, that back pain is the number one cause of disability in the world, the number one cause of disability in the world, only next to, say, um, respiratory issues, you know, something that keeps people uh, out of work, that they can't work because their body hurts. And so if you're, if you're one of those people, um, there are definitely answers, and, um, and we, we, we've shown it over and over again.